Thanks. Now, earlier in the day, uh, Barack Obama wanted to send a clear message to Europe that uh, America expected cooperation because, as he put it, uh, Europe faced a stronger threat from Al Qaeda than the United States. Uh, our security correspondent, Frank Gardner, joins us now. Frank, you keep an eye on what the continued the strength and the operations mm. of Al Qaeda. Would that be the assessment of security agencies here that European cities do face mm. a continuing threat from Al Qaeda? They do. I mean, in a way, that hasn't changed. They have faced this threat um, f for many years. But what President Obama, I think, has done is to many has stated the obvious that um, the world took its eye off the ball um, on the sort of Afghanistan Pakistan area um, and by saying as he boldly did very clearly earlier that we took our eye off the ball off Afghanistan because of Iraq well you can almost hear the collective sigh of relief on both sides of the Atlantic in sort of military analyst circles these think tanks people will be saying thank goodness we've been saying this for years finally the president of the most powerful country in the world has come out and said it in public um, because that is exactly what happened um, when I went to Afghanistan in late 2003 and you know the country very well people probably said the same to you back then they were saying we call this op forgotten operation forgotten um, because all the attention was on Iraq and that allowed the Taliban to regroup in the Pakistani tribal territories and also along the borderlands and come back as a much stronger reinvigorated force. So Obama and his team are now having to tackle a much stronger, more resurgent Taliban than they need have done if they hadn't gone to war in Iraq in 2003. And what President Obama has said today has basically put that out there in the public in a way that President Bush, I think, in his administration could never have done because the new team is in and they can admit the mistakes made by their predecessors. So now they can move on and tackle the Al-Qaeda threat. And just to sort of answer your question a bit more fully, actually, is I think there is a misconception amongst many that, oh, Al-Qaeda is just some sort of, it's an idea, it's a world view. Well, yes, it is that, but it's also an actual organization anchored very firmly in the tribal territories, in, and in Waziristan, and to some extent in the northwest frontier province, where there are actual bases and they are plotting attacks on Europe, some of which are successful. Uh, in the case of 7-7, the London bombings, others are thwarted. They certainly haven't given up their aspirations to hit continental United States. They will keep on trying. Um, and that, I think, is what he's referring to. And, of course, he's mentioning this because we understand he's not going to publicly embarrass uh, European mm. allies by asking them yet again for mm. more troops. But he certainly will be expecting, and we hear that perhaps Britain will come through, at least for the Afghan elections? They certainly will. I mean, it's been called a mini-surge. Um, in Britain's case, they're only talking about a few hundred troops, probably a battalion's worth, maybe about 600, who will deploy to Afghanistan purely for the Afghan elections in August and go home again. Separately to that, under review here in Britain is the possibility of increasing Britain's troop presence in Afghanistan. Now, the Taliban have greeted the US Afghanistan policy, as you rightly expect. They've called it eyewash, and they've said, why on earth, when President Obama has admitted that, our, that the US strategy is not working, why are they pouring more troops in? We will just send home more body bags. Well, you'd expect them to say that, but they have reacted to it already. But to Britain's troops, though, will go, uh, so it's not clear whether they'll go just for this mini surge or whether they can, will stay longer, as the Americans would hope. The, Briefly. The, the roughly 600 that are going to go for the elections will go back to Britain afterwards. Possibly there will be more sent after that to raise the number. That's not been announced yet. Frank Gardner, our security yeah. correspondent, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, as we continue our coverage of the NATO summit uh, taking place both in Baden-Baden in Germany, also Strasbourg in France. Uh, we've seen in the last half hour comments uh, from the German Chancellor Angela Merkel and the American President Barack Obama. He started his day with talks with the French President Nicolas Sarkozy and the meetings will continue. Do stay with us here on BBC World News as we bring you the latest news and analysis. A mission to persuade. President Obama joins NATO allies to mark the alliance's 60th anniversary. High on the agenda, the challenge posed by violence in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Will Mr. Obama's new strategy get the backing of his European partners? The more capability we see here in Europe, uh, the happier the United States will be the more effective we will be in coordinating our activities. But could new concerns over human rights complicate the mission in Afghanistan? NATO Secretary General shares his concerns with the BBC. You see a law almost coming into effect, not yet. There's still a possibility not to sign. 
which fundamentally violates women's rights and general human rights. Welcome, it's 8.30 in Kabul, 9 p.m. in Islamabad, and it's 6 p.m. in Baden-Baden in Germany. That's where President Barack Obama has just urged a better use of NATO resources in Afghanistan, saying al-Qaeda is a greater threat to Europe than to the United States. The U.S. President and the other NATO leaders have gathered for a summit to mark NATO's 60th anniversary. The French President Nicolas Sarkozy earlier gave his full backing to Washington's new strategy for both Afghanistan and Pakistan. With more on the day's events, here's Richard Slee. President Obama arrived in Strasbourg to a warm welcome and to a change of focus from the world economy to world security. The two glamorous first ladies greeted each other like old friends in front of an enthusiastic crowd. It's been a while since the French waved the stars and stripes with such verve. Clearly this is a popular man and the president seemed to be enjoying the moment. This two-day summit celebrates NATO's 60th anniversary and also the return of France into the organization after a 43-year absence. It feels really good to be able to work with a US president who wants to change the world and who understand that the world does not boil down to simply American frontiers and borders. And that is a hell of a good piece of news for 2009. 